Hey guys, Curious Monkey here. Today we are going to talk about audiometry. The first topic for today is pure tone audiometry, as also known as the PTA. Now, this pure tone audiometry, as the name suggests, pure tone, right? So it is going to use a machine known as audiometer, and this audiometer is going to give like pure tones at a frequency of 125, 250, 500, 1000, like doubling the frequency right so at these frequency we measure the threshold of the bone conduction and the air conduction right so what is this threshold let's say for example this 500 hertz right frequency so at this 500 hertz frequency a person can hear at a 10 decibels of intensity so this intensity right at this intensity level this level is suggestive of the threshold of the person's air conduction or bone conduction right this means that from this level beyond like from this level beyond 11 12 and all so he can perceive the sound properly so that means the threshold okay now let's talk about air conduction now air conduction as we know it consists of the external auditory canal the tympanic membrane the cycles the cochlea and the nerve fibers right so we are going to assess the whole pathway of the sound from the conductive and the sensory neural so it for the air conduction it is going to tell us about the system of the cochlear um, conductive as well as the sensory ne sensory neural pathway right so it is going to tell us both about the conductive as well as the sensory neural pathway now let's talk about this other thing that is known as the bone conduction now the bone conduction threshold is only going to tell us about the cochlea and the nerve okay so that means that it is only going to talk about the sensory neural pathway now why do we need this pta we need this pta to assess the type and the severity of the hearing loss like for example the type we can see that if the bone conduction is abnormal right if the bone conduction is abnormal that means it is suggestive that it is a sensory neural there is something some defect in the sensory neural pathway right so it can be sensory neural hearing loss whereas if there is a defect in the air, air conduction right if there is abnormality in the air conduction whereas the bone conduction is normal right that means bone conduction is normal that means sensory neural pathway is normal right but then as the as this has been excluded that sensory neural pathway has been normal then the only thing left is conductive pathway right so that is suggestive of conductive hearing loss so do that by that we can know the type of the hearing loss right now the next thing is the severity right or the degree degree of the hearing loss now there is five degrees of hearing loss mild moderate moderately severe severe and profound right so if the normal normal right if the normal is from 0 to 25 decibels it is in decibels okay then the mild will be from 25 to 40 decibels and moderate will be from 40 to 55 decibels and moderately severe will be from 55 to 70 decibels and severe will be from 70 to 90 decibels and profound will be more than 90 decibels sorry more than 90 decibels so by this let's say for example if this is the graph right if this is the graph and this is 10 20 30 40 decibels right so the normal till normal is 25 right from 25 if it goes down if it goes down then if like for an example if it is at 30 right so that means that is suggestive of mild right mild hearing loss so that is your degree like it can tell us the pta can tell us the degree of the hearing loss before taking a look at the graph we would like to know what are the signs used and how to read a graph right so now if this is the right ear and this is the left ear and we have to measure both air conduction and bone conduction right so there is a thing known as unmasked and masked now what is this mask masking is basically if this is the right ear and this is the left ear right so if we are going to test the right ear if we are testing the right ear then we are producing sound or the pure tone on the right side we are giving the pure tone on the right side whereas on the left side we are giving something known as the white noise right white noise to distract the left ear so that it does not interfere with the right ears results or interpretation so that is known as the masking okay so for memorizing the air conduction sign i would like to remember like this so in order to reach your goals you have to follow the right path right so 
goal in hindi literally translates to circle okay so in order to reach your goals you have to follow the right path and at the end you will get a present so on the right side as you can see for the unmasked part you will have a circle okay for the masked part you will have a box this is not a present obviously it is a box now if you do go on the other path that is the left path right then you will be wrong okay you will deviate from your goal and you will be wrong and if you do go on the left path then you will face many obstacles that is like hills or mountains or like that okay so again for this the cross will be your unmasked and your mountains or triangle will be your mast okay so now that is for the air conduction moving on to the bone conduction now as we know that there are many earphones nowadays earphones headphones that is noise cancelling right so imagine this is the headphones so noise cancelling now masking is somewhat like that only so that ambient sound or like surrounding sound do not interfere with the results right so for the masking it will be like this and the non masking unmasking one then it will be like this okay some ordinary earphones so now remember always remember the free end right this free end is always going to face on the side which you are choosing if this is the right side then it will face on the right side if this is the left side then it will face on the left side right now let's look at some graphs as you can see the first thing we need to do in a graph is to identify which side it belongs to okay so as you can see this is the bone conduction and this is the air conduction okay so in this case as this is facing towards the right side like this so it is the right side and these are the circles or the goals right so this is the right side here now the second thing we need to identify is whether it is a conductive or a sensory neural hearing loss case right so now as you can see that there is a definitive presence of an ab gap between the air conduction and the bone conduction it is known as the ab gap so now if this ab gap is more than 15 decibels right if this is more than 15 decibels it is a confirmatory case of conductive hearing loss okay so that is one of the ways to read a graph now moving on to the next graph this graph as you can see again here is the bone conduction which is facing on the right side right and the circle again so in this case there is no ab gap right there is no gap between the bone conduction and the air conduction that means that this is a sensory neural hearing loss as both of the as you can see both of the air conduction as well as the bone conduction is lower than uh, higher sorry higher than the normal threshold or the intensity right so that means that this is a sensory neural hearing loss as there is no ab gap present also so now let's take another look at this so as you can see which side would it be it will be the left side why because it is a cross right so this is the left side and as you can see here it is normal right the 25 decibels it's a normal level but then at the 4000 hertz right 4000 hertz of intensity uh sorry 4000 hertz of pure tone right there is we can see a dip a dip here there is an increase in the threshold now why is this is because this is present in the noise induced noise induced hearing loss okay so when there is a noise induced hearing loss early stages it shows a dip in the 4000 hertz of frequency specifically okay and later on it might dip like this continuously okay now uh, let's take a look at this graph as you can see this is the bone conduction right and it's facing towards the right side and this is the air conduction which is circle so this means that it is a right side air right so now let's see if this is the 25 decibel intensity which is the normal right so our air conduction is well beyond well above right well above the level of 25 so this means that there is a defect in the air conduction but as we can see in this bone conduction as we can see there is a significant notch or a drop in the in the 2000 hertz right at the level of 2000 hertz now what uh, this 2000 hertz notch is known as the car hearts notch okay now this car hearts notch is seen in autosclerosis 
okay this cohort's notch is seen in autosclerosis now autosclerosis is a condition in which the foot plate of the stapes right the foot plate of the stapes remains fixed on the oval window that means less mobility of the foot plate of the stapes that means less conduction of the sound from the conductive pathway right so that's that's the explanation why the air conduction threshold has been increased right because the conduction of the sound from the conductive pathway has been decreased so we have to increase the intensity so that explains for the air conduction now it does not explain for the bone conduction now why is there a specific notch or a specific dip at the bone conduction now this is very interesting okay now as we know that if this is the foot plate this is the foot plate of the stapes right and this is the cochlea and this is the nerve so now we know that the foot plate of the stapes is attached somewhat to the cochlea and the attachment or like where the foot plate of the stapes is attached it is the it is known as the basilar part of the base or the basilar part of the cochlea right so this means that we know that the base of the cochlea is responsible for high intensity frequency like uh, perception right whereas the apex is for low frequency low frequency low frequency right so now that there is immobility of the foot plate of the stapes now it is believed that when there is bone conduction right when there is bone conduction there is like mobility or like vibration of the bony part of the labyrinth right so this vibration will cause the basilar membrane to move and because of this the sound is perceived right but then in case of this part in case of autosclerosis this part which is the foot plate of the stapes has been fixed that means it is not going to move right so even if we give bone conduction right even if we give bone conduction even though the rest of the cochlea or the rest of the bony labyrinth is going to move the part where the foot plate of the stapes is fixed is not going to move and this part this specific part is believed to be the perception of the 2000 hertz frequency right so because this part does not perceive the sound anymore so there will be dip so we have to increase the intensity so that it hears the sound so there will be a dip seen in the bone conduction right so that is your cohort's notch seen in autosclerosis.